We complained and objected when the plastic bag levy was imposed on shoppers. But where's all that money been going for the past six years? Devi reports on another consumer mystery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Remember back in 2004 when we first heard that we had to pay for our shopping bags? At that stage, it was about 46 cents a packet. Now it's anything between 25 cents and 35 cents a packet. At the beginning, we all took our own shopping bags, but now we just pay up. Most people don't know what they pay for a plastic bag, and few know that the government takes four cents from every bag you buy. So who's making money out of selling us plastic bags? The one thing we do know that it's not the retailers. If they buy a bag for 35 cents, they sell it to you for 35 cents. If you use it, you pay for it. Albi Modise, a spokesperson for the Department of Environmental Affairs, says the plastic bag levy was introduced not to make money, but to clean up. We need to cut down the amount of plastic bags going to landfill sites. We need to move towards recycling. But you wouldn't be able to do that if plastic bags were being given for free. So we needed to find a way of getting the, 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 the consumer uh, to, to also pay for the plastic bags. And then the plastic bags were made a bit thicker so that they can have a longer li life cycle and they're able to reuse those plastic bags. That part of the levy worked. We used to make 10 billion bags a year and now it's down to 4 billion. But what's happened to all the money collected? Since 2004, 616.5 million rand has been collected and a further 180 million rand will be collected in 2011. The original agreement to the Plastics Federation of South Africa was that a large portion would go towards cleaning up the environment. And the general belief is that it should be used for that alone. But it isn't. Bertie Lawrence is a CEO of Waste Plan. I'm doing my part. I'm paying my tax on that bag when I buy it. And I'm hoping that it's going somewhere to sustain this whole industry, but it's not. Government created a Section 21 company called Buisa E-Bag, meaning bring the bag in Isizulu. It was to encourage recycling in poor communities, create jobs and clean up the environment. Only 13% of the levy goes directly to Buisa E-Bag. But that 13% equals 156 million rand over the past six years. And... There's very little to show for it. Buisa planned to build 30 buyback centers by 2007, but it's only built seven to date at a cost of 1.5 million rand per center, which at best generates 10 jobs. Three of the centers stand empty. Buisa says it has assisted existing recyclers with balers, scales, trolleys and training. But they have run youth education and cleanup campaigns. Chalet Stradum has been CEO since 2009 and was on the board prior to that. Environmental impact assessments had to be done prior to building. Okay, So that was, was caused some of the delays because you had to get consultants in and that process at that time was taking a bit of long. And then you also had delays on the side of the municipalities in terms of approving building plans. This is Buisae Bags Buyback Centre in Hammondskral, north of Pretoria. Now, it was established in 2008, but it's barely functional. The reason? No electricity. So it's been empty for two years and was vandalised. Buisa is now promising them a generator. These centres are built on municipal land and once complete, they're handed over and an entrepreneur is contracted to run them. But Buisa itself has major problems, says former board member David Hughes. The way of running the company was just, it was just ineffective. Um, and again, it's because of lack of expertise. So the board spent an inordinate amount of time trying to guide at an operational level, which is not what boards do. The accounts when I arrived were in such a shambles, they were illegible. Every single board meeting, if you go back to the minutes, the, the, the reports were challenged. Buisa has had three CEOs in six years. Chalet says when he took over, things were badly managed, but he's pulling things into shape. There weren't proper stats kept in the past, and nobody was monitoring these sites. What we have done now is put out a tender, and we're, we're going to adjudicate that tender within the next two weeks, to have an audit done of all these centres. Buisa employs 16 people. Why does it need to employ consultants to do the job? As former CEO of the Plastics Federation, David Hughes was automatically appointed to the Buisa board, which he says has been dysfunctional since inception because of the way it's constituted. 
Its other five members are drawn from trade unions, recycling and waste management. He says there were divisions from the start. When you're appointed to perform a duty, you expect some sort of common courtesies. You don't expect uh, board wars. You don't expect the board to be dysfunctional. You expect that employees will do their job. You'll expect that the articles are actually followed. The board meeting would take place, but it was, it was separate groups. So if one group voted A, the other group would always vote B. The Department of Environmental Affairs is ultimately responsible for Buisa as it approves business plans and motivates to Treasury for budget. So why no intervention? Because they didn't attend meetings and then finally we got them to actually appoint the director. When the cactus really hit the fast moving fan at the beginning of 2010, then government came back and said, okay, this belongs to us and we're going to get this thing sorted. After interviewing Buisa CEO and David Hughes, other board members confirmed to us off camera that both Buisa and the board were dysfunctional. Government admits it wasn't fully in control. It was established uh, you know, as a Section 21 company. So, you know, it, it, sometimes it ran, it, it's a bit difficult for the department to have total control over the way how things are supposed to happen. We could have been much tougher pretty earlier. Uh, however, we are, we are correcting that particular challenge. But to date, the department has approved 156 million rand, which generated just 70 jobs and collected very little waste. Loads of schools and NGOs run cleanup campaigns without funding from the government. Yet this year, Buisa wants a further 40 million rand. The plastics industry and particularly the recycling association, organizations, part of it, have been and are still adamant that that money belongs to the plastics industry and should be applied to fixing the waste and environmental issues around plastics and that's why the, the population should be concerned. 500 jobs in the plastic bag manufacturing industry were lost when the legislation came into effect in 2004. Douglas Grigg, CEO of the South African Plastic Recycling Organization, says it's a wasted opportunity. We're upset about it um, because if the money has been a couple of years that the levy has been happening and so much more could have been done in the recycling industry with this funding. Waste Plan, a recycling company in Cape Town, collects a thousand tons of waste a month and employs 300 permanent and 120 casual workers. They say the 180 million rand collected from the plastic bag levy this year should be used far more effectively. That money could service almost 900,000 homes. So you could, you could cover the whole of the city of Cape Town with that amount of money. I calculated about 80,000 tons of waste can be diverted away from landfill site in a whole year with that amount of money. I can't calculate the amount of jobs now, but it will be quite a bit of jobs. But the UCE bag, according to industry, has been a dismal failure and has not resulted in substantial amounts of bags being collected or Recycled. Are you happy with what they've done with that amount of money in six years? Is this good enough? That is not good enough. Which is why, I mean, we, we've been saying and we will not be shy to repeat what we've been saying. We, we still believe Buisa could have done far much better than it did. We still believe Buisa with the right, um, with the support of everyone, the board, the management and the department. Going forward, Buisa can play a role, but we are at this point working out the, the how Buisa should function, whether it should remain a section in one company or it should be a public entity. Kill Buisa, keep the levy, put it in business hands. So there's no reason why one can't take the legislated levy and continue with it, but apply it to the plastic waste strategy implementation. Why doesn't the Department of Environmental Affairs not just call it? We say a bag has been using taxpayers' money. Maybe now's the time to say it stops here. Which is why the remaining chunk of the money hasn't been released, because we're not happy with the business plan they've given us. It doesn't speak to us clearly about the deliverables. Leaving one wondering why Buisa was allowed to get away with it. From an environmental point of view, the levy has been a dismal failure. Half the waste recycled is still collected by 30,000 people off landfill sites. The environment remains polluted and the flagship organization created to do the job has failed.